<clears throat> and you're live, it says. It says, I'm live. What's up, everybody? How's it going? It's me, Drew Manning, just sipping on some delicious sparkling water, grapefruit flavored. It's naturally flavored with other natural flavors. And uh, it's keto friendly. So if you need a break from water, something like this can mix it up. It's not the same as soda, so I don't want you to think like it's the same as soda because it's not even close. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just sipping on that right now. And today, if you guys stick around to the end of this video, we're going to be talking about the quickest way to get into ketosis, scientifically speaking. Um, <clears throat> and it should work for you. It works for me. Uh, it works for all my keto friends. And so if you have questions about this, feel free to ask them. But if any of you guys are new to my YouTube channel or you don't know me that well, feel free to ask some questions over here. Let's see. Top chat. Oh, we already switched that to live chat. What's up, Josh Cortez? How are you doing? Tell me where you guys are from. Uh, I'd love to know where you guys are tuning in from. Are you at work right now? Are you at home? Um, where are you uh, before we go ahead and get started? So first things first, I currently live in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is a state in, of the United States of America. <laughs> What's up, Kathy Lease? Did I say that right? Hello, you're home in Seattle. Seattle is a beautiful city. Um, it's not raining. Just kidding. Josh Cortez from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, East Coast. What's up, Kathy? Oh, give me a thumbs up. I think I pronounced your name right. Uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I used to live out in Virginia, by the way. Uh, for my teenage years, uh, middle school and high school and college, I lived out there. And I'm glad to hear that it's not raining in, in Seattle. It snowed a ton out here in Utah. Uh, like literally, when I say a ton, like about a foot or so. We got about a foot. And it was uh, a pain in the ass trying to shovel it. But it was a good workout. You know, it's good to get a good workout in. So uh, if any of you guys have questions about keto um, or where you're at on your journey, please feel free to ask them. Um, I want this to be interactive. I want this to be, you know, pretty uh, casual. Um, you know, uh, you guys know me. I'm a pretty easygoing guy. So <clears throat> I like to interact with people. I, I wish we could do this in person. Maybe sometime we will. Uh, which, by the way, I do have some appearances, some speaking engagements coming up. And uh, I'll be at something called Metabolic Health Summit in L.A. Uh, January 31st through February 3rd. It's a great event. There's going to be so many amazing speakers about out there. So if any of you guys are in L.A., <clears throat> go to metabolichealthsummit.com and see if there's still tickets available. It might be sold out. Uh, Jan M., what's up from Missouri? An hour or so from KC. Sorry about your Chiefs, if you're a Chiefs fan. I'm not sure. But um, <clears throat> I saw the games yesterday. <clears throat> uh, Josh Cortez already has the first question of the day. Uh, what should my levels be around – to ensure I'm in ketosis. You spot a new keto keto meter. Now, Josh, make sure it's a blood ketone meter instead of just a urine strip, a keto urine strip. So if you could just confirm that's a blood ketone meter, that would be great. Um, anything above a 0 0.5 on the blood ketone meter is technically nutritional ketosis. And so, <clears throat> um, you know, above that, there's no optimal number. Everyone's different. So anything above a 0 0.5 should be um should work let's see kathy any link for a good keto meter yes um best ketone test.com for slash fit to fat to fit and then that gives you a discount of course if you want to use my is that, is that a clickable link maybe it is hopefully it is but if you want to use my discount code uh it's a blood ketone meter with strips um uh, keto strips that you just put into the little um, keto meter, the ketone meter, and then you prick your finger and it comes with all that and you read your level. It's super simple. What's up, Shane Moore from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you. I love my Canadian brothers and sisters out there. It's an amazing, amazing country. But I've only been to a few places in Canada. I need to go visit more. Um, Kathy said, "Met Italian restaurant. Uh, North Italian restaurant. That's interesting. Well, tell Matt I said what's up, <laughs> Kathy. Um, not sure what I was doing at an Italian restaurant, but hopefully I was eating keto. Just kidding. Um, so today we are talking about keto, you guys. We are talking about the quickest way to get into ketosis with a few other hacks. Because here's the thing: with the ketogenic diet, 
I like to help people out because there does need to be some research. There's a lot of uh, things that people need to understand before jumping into the ketogenic diet. And so some people think, okay, I'm going to go keto. That means I'm just going to eat, you know, beer or sorry, beer, <laughs> butter, bacon, and cheese all day long. Beer is not keto friendly, by the way. Um, and then that's it, right? There's so much more to it, right? A lot of people experience the keto flu and then they think, oh, this is miserable. I don't want to do this. And then they miss their carbs and some people gain weight on keto. Some people, you know, there's other wrong ways to do it. So my hope with these lives is to give you guys good advice and value to help you on your journey, whether you're doing keto or not. This is not just a keto channel, you guys. Obviously, I love to help people learn about the ketogenic diet ever since ever since I went on the Dr. Oz show. Um, and so, what's up, Ross Young? Thanks for joining. Uh, let's see, Jan M. I've been on keto for almost two years and and haven't lost a bunch, 30 pounds. That is a bunch, in my opinion. Uh, kind of went off the last bit, but am getting back on. So curious as to how you can get back on quickly. Great question. That's what we're going to be covering today, Jan. So stick around. Um, I'm just waiting for you know more people to jump on. It's 4.13 here my time. What time is it where you guys are? I know Seattle's Pacific, North Carolina's East Coast. Where's everyone else from? Um, I know Pacific time's an hour behind. I don't know what time it is in Vancouver. Uh, you're probably West Coast time, right? Pacific time, Shane? Possibly, I, I'm not sure. I, I know Vancouver's really close to Seattle, so. And I'm pretty sure Seattle is Pacific time. I'm Mountain time though. <clears throat> six thirteen Florida time. Ryan Rivera. Yep, six thirteen East Coast time. <laughs> Peggy Hall, welcome. What's up, you guys? So if you guys are just jumping on now, obviously you guys know me. Hopefully, as Drew Manning, and I'm gonna start doing more YouTube lives this year, 2019. And um, my goal is to help you on your journey, whether you're doing keto or not. So my goal is just to interact with you guys to make sure that you guys. Um, receive the help that you need uh, on your, you know, your physical transformation journey, which obviously is more than just the physical transformation. Um, there's so much more to transformation than just the physical side. And you'll hear me a lot when I talk about the mental and emotional side. We're going to tie all that in. So Andrea Betts uh, from the UK, welcome 11, 17 p.m. Oh, you're staying up late to watch this. <laughs> um, can you guys hear me okay? I don't see any streaming issues on my end uh, some people say they keep losing me um i'm right here i'm right here i'm not going anywhere so here's the thing with the with the keto diet and the quickest way to get into it so if you guys are ready for this let's get started okay <clears throat> and then feel free to ask questions along the way so the quickest way to get into ketosis you know first and foremost is just to stop eating right because the ketogenic diet <clears throat> is our body's backup system to help us function as humans when there's no food available. Now, you and me and our generation, our parents' generation, probably has always had access to food 24-7, uh, whenever we want it, right? Go to the grocery store, go to, a go to a restaurant, you know, order Uber Eats, whatever, and you can, um, you know, get access to food whenever you want. But our, you know, grandparents, great-grandparents, you know, great-great-grandparents probably didn't always have access to food like we do. And so, you know, if you had to hunt for your food, and find your food that way, you know, you probably had to go days without food sometimes. And if we didn't have this uh, natural metabolic state to enter into where we're burning fat as fuel, our own body fat, then we probably would have died off as a species. And so, um, like I said, the quickest way to get into ketosis is just to stop eating. If all of you guys stopped eating right now, you probably, <laughs> you, you would be in ketosis really quickly. But a way to amplify amplify that is, is this, is your body will burn through all of the glucose available first before it starts producing ketones. So a lot of uh, glucose is stored in our body in the liver. And one of the quickest ways to deplete that, our glycogen levels, uh, is to do some type of high intensity uh, exercise. And so <clears throat> what I mean by that is maybe some sprints, maybe some, um, you know, um, you know, some sprints on a bike or a treadmill or a rower or a ski erg, or it can be some type of like CrossFit style workout where your heart rate gets up to a really high level. That'll deplete your body of any glycogen. And then from there, your body is forced to get back to start producing ketones as an alternative fuel source. So if you combine fasting with a high intensity interval workout, 
that is probably right there. That combination is the quickest way to get back into ketosis. So uh, thank you, Peggy Hall. I'm glad you like my shirt. It's a um, it's from a surf shop I got in California. <laughs> Kathy Lee, you live in the forest. That sounds awesome. Um, Peggy Hall just ate a cabbage burger. I'm not sure what a cabbage burger is, like the burger wrapped in cabbage. So um, Dao Yang, thank you for joining us. Um, what supplements do you recommend while doing keto? Here we go, right here. I got a website to send you to, which is, you know, I'm going to shamelessly plug my own line of supplements. It's called Complete Wellness. It's my own brand of keto-friendly supplements. Uh, we have things like Keto Meal, which is a keto meal replacement made with 100% grass-fed collagen protein. We use MCT oil powder and coconut oil powder as the healthy fats. And there's literally six ingredients in our keto meal. We have vanilla flavored and uh, caramel uh, flavored. It's awesome. It tastes great in coffee. It tastes great in, with unsweetened almond milk. And then um, let's see. Uh, do we have a military discount, Josh? Great question. I'm not sure if we do yet, but if we do, I will put it out there, Josh. If you follow me on social media, I'll, I'll let you know if we can set that up for sure, man. And if you are in the military, Josh, thank you. Uh, I, I um, you know, thank you for your service. Um, if you are in the military, so uh, Peggy Hall, cabbage and a burger. Um, that sounds delicious. <laughs> um, it's almost dinner time, my time. Um, okay, so the other supplements that we have at Complete Wellness is we have MCT oil powder, which is a healthy fat that gives you a brain boost, helps to suppress your appetite, converts to ketones really quickly in the body. You can add that to your coffee, your tea, your smoothie. Um, you can even bake with it. It's getting in those healthy fats that your brain loves because it crosses the brain, the brain blood barrier really quickly. So it converts to ketones and your body literally can't store it as fat. So that's why we use 95% C8 MCT oil powder uh, with our supplements. Um, we have vanilla flavored, we have chocolate mint, chocolate caramel sea salt, and chocolate macadamia for our MCT oil powder. And the other product that we have is our BHBs, which is our exogenous ketones. Now here's the thing with exogenous ketones, you guys. Exogenous ketones <clears throat> don't technically put you in a state of nutritional ketosis. So even though your blood ketone levels are elevated when you take uh, ketones, right, BHBs, that's not the same as getting into ketosis nutritionally, right? Um, your body isn't burning more fat as fuel by, drink, by drinking, you know, a, a BHB supplement. And this isn't BHB, by the way. This is um, sparkling water, grapefruit flavored. But what I'm saying is if you take BHBs, it, and even though your blood ketones rise, it's not the same as nutritional ketosis. So I can't technically say, hey, the quickest way to get into ketosis is to drink a BHB you know, exogenous ketone um, drink, that's not the same thing. So the quickest way to get into ketosis, nutritional ketosis is to fast and combine that with uh, high intensity interval training for like 15 to 20 minutes, it'll deplete your glycogen levels, you'll be back into ketosis in no time. So um, uh, we have a ton of other supplements at Complete Wellness as well, you guys, if you haven't checked it out, go over to completewellness.com. Uh, we have things like probiotics, we have krill oil, we have uh, char uh, activated charcoal pills. We have apple cider vinegar pills. We have turmeric. Um, and uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we have a keto pre-workout, if any of you guys like keto pre-workouts supplements. But it's a healthy pre-workout. We don't use um, chemicals or artificial sweeteners. We don't have – it's not just a hyped-up caffeinated product that is just very high on stimulants. It has a moderate amount uh, compared to everybody else. Uh, but we actually add in, in adaptogenic herbs and things like uh, medicinal mushrooms to help boost performance and endurance in your workout. So it's called Complete Rush. It's a, it's a keto pre-workout. You can check that one out. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm shamelessly plugging my own supplement line because Dao Yang was asking. Um, you definitely don't need supplements to do keto. I'm not saying you do. But we are a society of convenience and we like convenient things. And so keto-friendly supplements can make the keto lifestyle more convenient. So um, let's see. Okay, Dao Yang, you're asking about the, when you should take the supplements. So um, you don't need to take them at the same time. <laughs> That's for sure. The keto meal replacement, for example, keto meal, you want to take that when you're in a bind and you, you're pressed for time and you don't have a lot of time to make a meal and you need something quick. 
drinking some keto meal, putting it in some unsweetened almond milk, put it in a shaker cup like this, shake it up, and then take it with you on the go. The BHBs, the exogenous ketones that um, we have, we have strawberry lemonade and orange mango. You can take that first thing in the morning, or you can take that pre-workout, or if you have a long day and you're fasting and you need an extra brain boost, um, when you need to suppress your appetite, you're hungry, and you know it's not time to eat yet, you can take a BHB that way. Um, so, and then the MCT oil powder, I add that to my coffee in the morning, but you can add that to your afternoon tea or nighttime. There's no perfect time to take it, it just depends. So hopefully that answers your questions on when to take it. Um, Hector, welcome. Thanks for joining from Wellington, Florida. I've never been to Wellington. I don't know where that's at. But um, keto has been life-changing. Love hearing that, Hector. And hopefully your journey is going well for you. Um, you're, uh, uh, I'm assuming you've had success on the ketogenic diet. Um, what is the purpose of MCT oil besides spending a couple days in the bathroom? <laughs> uh, funny question, Peggy Hall. So Peggy asks, you know, what's the purpose of MCT oil besides making you go to the bathroom? So here's the thing with MCT oil. It can be hard on the stomach for some people. If you've never had MCT oil, it can be really, really hard. Um, where, you know, and not for everybody, but it, it just it takes a while to build up a tolerance to it. Um, but it doesn't happen to everyone, just you know, Peggy. Um, you definitely want to reduce your portion sizes that you're taking in. Uh, if you've never had it before and you're continue to have that problem, maybe half the dose that you're that you're you know taking in. Um, the other thing is to try using MCT oil powder, Peggy. So that's what we use at Complete Wellness, my supplement company. Uh, we use Complete Oil uh, MCT oil powder. That's 95% C8, um, which is the most effective. Um, um, MCT, you know, medium train, chain triglyceride that converts to ketones. It's the most effective at converting to ketones the quickest. Um, and so, um, the, you know, MCT oil has a lot of healthy benefits. You know, it's healthy fat. It's a, it's great for your brain. Helps to suppress your appetite. It raises ketones in the blood. Um, it's very keto friendly. Um, but I would try switching over to powder to see how that helps out. Um, let's see. Kathy recommends. Uh, blending your MCT oil that can help out as well to make it frothier but try the powder um, uh, go to completewellness.com the vanilla flavor is my is my favorite um, so hopefully that that helps out okay getting back into uh, keto and the quickest way to get into ketosis like I said the most important thing is to uh, fast right and if you've never done a fast I know it can be hard um, it doesn't mean you have to like you're if you just eat a keto diet you probably should be in ketosis within a few days, right? Most people within two days. Some people can take up to five days. You just have to really limit your glucose. You have to, you know, track your macros, track your proteins, fats, and carbs to limit the glucose that you're taking in. And you'll be in a state of ketosis if you're not in a rush. But if you want to get back in really quickly, just fast for 24 hours and then do a high-intensity interval workout uh, that will deplete your, your glycogen stores in your body. And then you'll start producing ketones really, really quickly. <clears throat> um, because there's no glucose left available in your body. And so um, if you do that and you combine things like MCT oil powder and BHBs that will raise your blood ketone levels, it'll feel like you're back in ketosis really quickly. So here's the thing. The longer you've been doing keto, the more effective or the quicker you are, it's going to be for you to get back into ketosis. Into ketosis. So like for me, I've been, in, been doing keto for so long, I could go out tonight and have cheesecake and pizza but then by tomorrow, I could be back in ketosis really quickly. But if you are just starting out and you've only been doing it for a day or two or a week, your body doesn't isn't hasn't become adapted, keto adapted yet. And so it might take a while for you to become keto adapted. So be patient with yourself on your keto journey. Um, don't expect instant results. And, um, you know, it isn't a race to the finish line. That's for sure. But I do want to give you guys some hacks that are applicable to doing the ketogenic diet effectively. So, like, let's say you've been doing keto for two years. Like, um, who was saying they've been doing keto for two years? Uh, Jan, right? Um, you've been doing keto for two years. Um, you're probably adapted by now, right? Um, and, you know, maybe you don't want to stay strict keto for the rest of your life. And that's totally fine, too. I don't stay in ketosis year-round, you guys. I definitely dip in and out of ketosis. And so for me, you know, implementing some type of intermittent fasting 
uh, helps me get back into ketosis quicker, but my ability to get, to get back into ketosis will be quicker than someone who's just getting started. So that's what I'm saying is be patient with yourself, you guys. Don't feel like there's a rush to the finish line. Um, and so, yes, Kathy, intermittent fasting is magic. Uh, intermittent fasting is probably the best way to get started with fasting. I wouldn't recommend if you've never done fasting before, don't just go eat a huge pizza and bake. All right, that's my last meal. I'm not going to eat for you know 72 hours. It's going to be hell for the first little bit because your body can be so starving for glucose because you just fed it glucose and it doesn't know how to use ketones effectively yet. So you might experience the keto flu. So anyways, um, uh, intermittent fasting is a great way to get started. So what I recommend for someone that has never fasted before is to do 12 hours, a 12 hour fast um, <clears throat> where they fast from you know 7 p.m. till 7 a.m., which isn't that hard. Most people can go that long without food, right? You eat dinner with your family, you don't eat before you go to bed, and you go to bed and you wake up at 7 a.m. and you have breakfast, that's not that hard. And then from there, you do that for a week, and then you increase it to 14 hours, right? So you do from 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. and you see how you do there. Um, and you do that for about a week, right? And see how your body adapts. The first few days might be hard, but your body will eventually adjust, right? And, and then the next week, you bump it up to 16 hours. So you wouldn't eat technically. If you stop eating at 7 p.m., you could eat the next day at, um, what would that be, 11 a.m.? <clears throat> so it just depends on what fits your lifestyle better. If you want to try intermittent fasting, definitely give it a try. You know, not everything works perfectly for everybody. Um, the ketogenic diet isn't, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a magic bullet for everybody or a magic pill that is going to fix everybody's health, right? Um, but it can be beneficial for sure if you do it the right way. And then, um, you know, intermittent fasting uh, is a great tool as well if you if you do that right. But um, you know, like I said, different things work for different people. So be patient with yourself, you guys. Uh, let's see. And if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them. Like I said, I'm here to help you guys on your journey. Um, I want to make sure you guys receive the help that you need because you know I think. You know, no matter who you are, uh, especially if you if you're struggling with a physical transformation, it's important to have someone to ask your questions too. Because if you're just trying to figure it out on your own, you might get confused. Uh, you might, uh, you know, just be like a, a paper, you know, a leaf in the wind being blown back and forth with, okay, well, this person said this and this person said that. So, um, Shane Ward just broke a 20-hour fast with some bone broth. What do you break your fast with? Great question, Shane. So um, I've done a seven-day fast. I've done I've done a seven-day fast. I've done a four-day fast, three-day fast, two-day fast, twenty-four-hour fast. For me, breaking it with some bone broth is pretty easy on the stomach. You don't want to incorporate something that's really hard to digest right away. Um, for me, I can digest things like um, chicken and eggs pretty well, and butter. And so sometimes I'll do a small meal. If I do a seven day fast, um, if I do a seven day fast, you know, uh, which I don't do very often, I've only done once in my life and it was probably too long for me. Four days seems to be the optimal range for me. And so, um, uh, I had spinach, just a little bit of spinach, not too many vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower would be really hard for me to digest right away. And you guys start out with smaller portions. So breaking, breaking with bone broth would be pretty easy on the stomach. Some water, some salt, and then a small meal, a small keto-friendly meal with some healthy fats like some ghee or butter uh, mixed in with my eggs and spinach and then maybe cut up some chicken sausage. Um, you know, not too much, like a smaller size meal just and eat really, really slow is really important. And that's kind of how I would break my fast. Um, the Meso Peaks asks, seven-day fast, did you lose muscle? Great question. Um, Here's the thing, I, I would say no I didn't, um, but my DEXA scan, here's what happened. I lost 10 pounds total in seven days, eight pounds of that was lean muscle mass and two pounds of that was fat mass. But here's the thing, after, after so I did it before and after, right? Before the seven days, after the seven days, and then I did it five days later. I did it five days after uh, my I did it again, the DEXA scan, and seven of those eight pounds of lean muscle mass, I gained back. So 
I don't think it's possible to lose eight pounds of muscle in, in seven days and then put, put back on seven pounds of muscle in five days after that is not how the body works. But so that lean mass that I lost, I probably maybe lost a tiny bit. Um, but the two pounds of fat mass all came off like that stayed off, even though I ate normal for the next five days. Um, so uh, that's the thing is when you're in a state of ketosis, it's very protein sparing. And so your body preserves its lean muscle mass. Uh, and we'll use fat mainly as its energy source. So um, what's my recommendation for a fasted workout? Three days lifting moderate weight and two days boxing with CrossFit type circuit. Uh, that's a great That's a great thing. That's a great um, mix of workouts, Hector. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I do all of those on a fast, uh, to be honest with you. I can go lift heavy, um, you know, three days a week without any food and two days boxing with CrossFit type circuit. I could do all those in a fasted state and feel awesome. Now that if you don't feel awesome doing those, that's totally fine. You might want to look into ketone supplementation and, uh, you know, BHBs, which um, you can find at my website that I put up there, completewellness.com. Let me put that up there really quick. Completewellness.com. We have some BHBs or exogenous ketones that can help you out with maybe those CrossFit type of workouts. Um, if you feel like you're drained a little bit <clears throat> and then I have some other hacks as well that can help out, which I'll talk about in a different video. Um, yeah, that's the thing with, you know, ketones are very protein sparing. A lot of people think if you stop eating, right, this was my mentality too. Back in the day, I thought if I stop eating, I'm going to lose all my lean muscle mass and I want to lose my lean muscle mass. Right. So, <laughs> um, for me that, uh, you know, was it was a concern, but then once I learned the science behind it and how it works, I realized that okay, I'm not going to lose my lean muscle mass. Um, you know, and here I am, you know, eating once or twice a day, you know, maintaining my muscle mass, uh, which you know I would say it's it's pretty decent, right? <laughs> I'm I'm not one to like you know get huge. Uh, I'm not. I weigh about 195. I don't you know plan to put on a ton of mass just because I'm 38 years old. I'm not trying to get bigger, faster, stronger. And so, um, <clears throat> for me, I like the, the the body composition I'm at right now. So I'm not trying to put out a, uh, put on a lot of lean muscle mass, but I thought I would lose it when I ate six meals a day, going to two meals a day when I went keto. Um, but I haven't lost any of it. Um, I'm six foot two inches, by the way. And thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Your 53 May weight loss has been slow, but I'm okay with that. Fully committed to at least one year. Wow, Kathy, I love your attitude. I love how dedicated you are and um, realize that, you know, it's not a race to the finish line. I love, uh, you know, some people get frustrated because they want to lose all the weight overnight, you know, and it doesn't happen that way realistically. So um, I love hearing your attitude and the fact that you're 53 and you're still committed uh, and moving forward is awesome. And uh, so a lot of respect to you as well. And so I hope I I have that same <laughs> dedication when I'm 53, which is not too far away. I just turned 38 recently in December. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, you guys, here's the thing. Uh, just to, to finish up here because we're coming up on time. It's it's Monday night. I don't know what you guys do on Monday nights. Um, okay, one more question. What are your thoughts on whey isolate when on keto? So that's a good question. The problem with whey is you, you have to be careful with it. Is You might want to add in some healthy fats to it. Like that's where you could take – whey protein and add in, take our complete or our MCT oil powder and add it to it. And that'll slow down the insulogenic, insulogenic effect of taking whey protein. Um, Cause whey protein by itself can spike insulin, which could knock you out of ketosis. So you might want to do some testing with some blood ketones to find out for sure if that's the case. Um, <clears throat> so, or add some healthy fats to it and that should help out as well. Let's see, Dao Yang. Um, two meals a day versus zero meals a day if I already keto adapted besides the fasting period are there different benefits to doing one over the other if weight loss is the goal um, watching the real skinny on fat Kathy that's awesome let me think about your question Dow I need to make sure I understand before I try and answer it two meals a day versus zero one meal a day is that what you're asking oh two meals a day versus one meal a day if I were to keto adapted, um, you know what? I don't know if there's a huge benefit to doing two meals versus one meal a day, Dow. 
It's a great question. If weight loss is the goal, you could switch to one meal. I know people that see great results on one meal because it's kind of extreme. I just don't know if it's sustainable for a lot of people. I did it for about two months um, where I ate one meal a day. The only thing I didn't like about that was I felt like I had to get in so many calories in one meal that I felt like I had to stuff myself to the brim to where I was, you know, it was hard to uh, function afterwards because my body spent so much energy trying to um, trying to digest that food. And so um, I, that's what I didn't like about one meal a day, but it can work for both can work for weight loss. So I wouldn't say one works better than the other, except for the one that you can stay consistent with. So try both out for a period of like one to two months and see how it goes down. Um, the Real Skinny on Fat, you guys, is a documentary that I was a part of um, where they interview a bunch of doctors and experts, over 80 doctors and experts on the topic of you know how we were lied to as a society, telling us fat is bad for us. So go check it out. Um, I don't know if I have the link available with me. I'd have to look for it. But in, anyways, um, Samuel, welcome. How's it going? Um, is it possible to mix keto and paleo? Yes, it is. You could totally do a paleo version of keto. Just get rid of dairy and get rid of any fruits or starchy carbohydrates, and you should be fine. Um, that it's pretty much paleo from there, to be honest with you. Uh, which one am I in, Peggy? Uh, I was in uh, the real skinny on fat. So um, I don't have the link on me, but it's a documentary called The Real Skinny on Fat. You might be able to find it. I post it about on my Facebook page if you want to go to my Facebook page at fit to pet to fit and it should be up there. But anyways, um, okay, what should you do when you're fatigued during a seven-day fast? Good question, Miko. Uh, so when I was on my seven-day fast, I didn't exercise, but I would go for a walk every day. And going for a walk energized me being out in nature and putting some, you know, uh, like a podcast or an audio book in uh, really helped me. Um, taking a shot of salt can help out as well. Oh, which episode am I on, Peggy? I don't know which episode I'm on. Um, let me ask Naomi. I'll I'll text Naomi in a little bit and uh, and find out. But I know there's what eight episodes, I believe. So maybe just watch all of them. And <laughs> everyone that's on there is definitely worth listening to. So um, Kathy says not one through five, so it must be six, seven, or eight, possibly. <laughs> but uh, if you do find it, let me know how I did. Um, the I would I would check out this company, realsalt.com forward slash keto. This is a company out of Utah, and I would recommend this kind of salt more than any other salt. Um, it's a it's real salt, and all the trace minerals are still intact. And I would recommend that salt over any other because it's non-polluted. There's no pollutants from you know sea salt you know you don't know what part of the ocean it's coming from if there was pollutants you know where they extracted the water from um, pink Himalayan salt is good as well but you don't know which mine they're taking it out of you don't know the process they use to extract it um, the one here in Utah Redmond real salt I've been to the mine I know the process and I know that it's pure salt there's nothing added or taken from it and that's why I like that salt for keto um, let's see, Meso Peaks, 40 grams of fats and 20 grams of protein per meal. Is this a good ratio? Per meal? Um, it depends. Um, you know, what's your what's your goal? I don't I don't know. Is it a good ratio? It should be, right? That's 180 calories of uh oh wait, 40 grams of fats and 20 grams of protein. Sorry, so that's gonna be you know 360 calories from fat, and that's gonna be only 80 calories from protein per meal so it just depends on you know what your total goal is right um that's what about almost 500 right almost 500 calories per meal so that might be too little if you're eating, only eating one meal a day or two so you definitely gotta check it out anyways you guys i'm gonna i'm gonna sign off here in a little bit but don't worry i'll be back i'll be back with more youtube lives but i Definitely enjoy interacting with you guys, and there will be more of these in the near future, so stay tuned. Looking forward to it, you guys. Keep moving forward on your journey. Remember, just to recap, the quickest way to get back into, into ketosis is to do some type of fast and then add in some high-intensity interval training, and you'll be back in ketosis in no time. So really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much, and um, I'll be back on again soon. Okay, you guys, have a great Monday night, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.